Maybe one day you sat down as a little kid and you were typing up on some Google homepage and you accidentally hit control shift I and oh my god, what is this? There's an index page. Uh, dude, what is happening? Why is there code? Why is the whole internet code? Well, this may have been you when you were 10 years old and this may have been a lot of people back then as well. However, this may be the start of one of the most egregious pathways you've ever chosen in your life. But hey, it's not minimum wage, so you might be onto something, right? I'm sure the market is great for what you want to do when you're older and I'm sure there's gonna be no complications at all. It's gonna be just set there one and done. Now I'm just kidding, but hey, we're going to be going over the five stages of programming. And these are ones that I experience a lot because, oh boy, I have a really interesting mind if you couldn't tell by all 40 of my amazing videos, but let's get straight to it. The first of these is just the honeymoon phase. It's like you just fell in love with coding for the first time. Hey, you are so cool. You build stuff, have data, attributes, even crazier stuff. Wait, there's multiple paradigms? Wait, you have bit masking? Oh my gosh, this is so awesome. And DSA, there's data structures. You can make cool things out of the cool things. You can stack it on top of the other. Ugh. You can stack it on top of each other. Oh my God, I mean, wow, this is awesome. How could this possibly go wrong? I mean, there's no way jobs are going to expect me to do like all of these problems, like the hard ones too, right? Yeah. So you have a lot of fun. You know, you might find some YouTube tutorial that is like 200 hours long and you feel like doing maybe five hours of it and then giving up. You're still having as much fun as possible. You tell all your bros and you tell your mom and dad for about five hours straight what the whole purpose of coding is and you feel like you're Einstein. But this unfortunately is a terrible path because this arrogance only leads to just so much like basically a desolate state of torture. This leads to agony, but the positive goes away and you start, you start coding and it's not fun. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. The second of these would just be someone who learns more than just codes. Hey, wait a minute. The coding's kind of cool, but I have to make stuff out of this. Like what? Well, you can make websites, you can make software, desktop apps, you can make drivers for your computer. If you've been coding for 10 years, there's actually a video on YouTube of someone coding one of those. Absolute crack. Yeah. You might be able to discover that there is more than one thing to this. You have Linux, you have multiple OSs, and you probably are developing a Terry Davis obsession. That's kind of fun though, because look, I watch Terry Davis videos when I'm bored and I perfectly understand it. It's, it's funny. Maybe you're writing some complex programs by now. You've learned object oriented programming. And anytime you take a computer science class in school, everyone thinks you're him. But deep down, you have the worst imposter syndrome possible because you never ever feel good at coding. After making a few projects and showing off all your friends, they're like, hey, maybe this is for me. All right, you feel you feel kind of collected once again. And that leads you to the third phase, the very fun phase, in my opinion. The third one would be open source and discovering competition. Now, you kind of let the competition elude you at first when you're initially programming because no one's going to shit on you for making some stupid, like, object-oriented CLI task to do project. No one's going to care about that. But what about when you actually need to care and there are people looking at your projects that know exactly what the codes do? So there's no shortcuts. You can't show your shitty, overcomplicated program to your mom and she'll call you smart, maybe give you a kiss on the cheek. No, these are 40-year-old sweaty Reddit mods who actually sit down there and look at code and review it all day instead of maybe having a little bit of fun with their life. Now, are these people actually running the internet and making it maybe a little more smooth? Yeah, but dude, they suck. They suck because they're good. I'm getting a little hot. You know, I'm kind of I'm kind of getting heated. Oh, my. oh man, I gotta, I gotta lock in. Those prompts people to make a multitude of choices. This prompts people to either make maybe a Twitter account, maybe they make a YouTube account, um, Max Syntax, and, and maybe they decide to start posting content and getting their name out there. Now, this is a perfectly respectable thing to do because, hey, you have to be more than just what you code. That was low key a bar. I didn't make, like, there's no AI. I, I just have a notepad here full of, like, the first five things I wanted to discuss. The rest of this, I'm just spitting out of my ass. But listen, if you made it this far in the video, the magic in my head is doing something, so you might as well just click that like button so I don't have some, you know, self decency problems. Now, the fourth stage of programming is where you start to understand that coding in itself is very similar, and you start to begin understanding the complex concepts such as concurrency and, you know, threading, multiprocessing, asynchronous programming. I mean, you know... I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Channels. I mean, most of them are kind of similar. And this and this brings you to understanding why multiple programming languages exist in the first place. You start questioning things outside of your typical realm of aspects and you start, you know, diverging your interests because it gets to be a little boring to stick with one program all day. So you might switch it up. You might try some web dev. You might try some cloud development. You might try some distributed systems, system design, whatnot. 
and you probably get a similar experience out of them. And this honestly leads you to what I call the great burnout. I feel like no programmer sat here every day and started coding up a shit ton and genuinely enjoying it by the third week. Now I can say this because look, I go to github.com, I go to my profile, and if we look, I have two stars on an internet connectivity tracker. And my graph's been somewhat consistent. And there's a lot of gaps here. And I'll be very honest here. There is a fat sense of burnout in my graph. And that's completely normal. Sometimes you have to get your spark back. And my biggest piece of advice to anyone actually wanting to get that start back would just be to understand the fundamentals once more. Slap yourself in the head if you think you have to skip over the stupid shit. Do the stupid shit because then you can understand the other stuff and kind of go forward with it. And you know, it, this applies to math as well. I'm sure when you started doing factoring and you saw what they did and you're like, dude, what, what the hell is this? Then that I kind of you have to do the old stuff. You don't do algebra two without algebra one. Now stage five. Stage five is what I like to call HSHV sphere on Twitter or coding Jesus. Now this is a level of crack that DSA is what you do in your pastime. You like coding up obscure trees that no one knows about to not even feel better about yourself because you genuinely like it. Now usually this comes with a small aspect of the spectrum, but I think in reality this comes with a total cool awesome personality aspect. You are so cool that no one likes you and you sit alone in your room all day and your only friends are online. I'm just playing of course. This is Loki turning into my life day by day. The more green your graph, the less green... The more green your graph, the less bitches you get. I mean, dude, I was trying to think of something right there, but nothing was really spawning in my brain. So what does this lead to? There's five stages on paper, but there is more like 50 stages. And they're miniature stages that go in between the gaps of all five of these stages. I personally don't know what the hell I do at this point. I just like to code things at the top of my head because I'm at the point now where I don't give a shit about the language, the concepts. I do care about the system design or maybe the, the patterns I'm using because they actually matter. But I'm just solving problems at this point. If I see a problem and it's in my relative scope of skill, and at this point it's basically just back in development or just working with some sort of data I have, which very similar, they kind of go hand in hand. I'm not a big fan of lower level hardware, or anything of that sort. I just solve problems and Linus Torvalds said it himself. The only reason I'm coding to this day is because I'm just solving other people's shit. And that's awesome. There is an infinite supply of problems for you to do. The moment you feel like you have no more problems to solve, you have given up on yourself or you're just complacent. And if you're complacent, assess yourself, smack yourself across the face, go on open source and yeah, I guess you could say the sixth stage is open source because, you know, after you make your GitHub and you start posting your own things, you need to learn things like other people's projects. And that is when you become a boss. It's like writing your own stories versus looking at someone else's story maybe 40 years ago and trying to understand it and solve a 20 question MCQ. Now, if you can do that with a 20 out of 20, you're him. But if you get maybe a 15 out of 20, well, think about it. You have five questions you didn't get right. So if you only understand, let's see, you understand 75% of a code base. So what if you want to implement something? All right, open source allows you to modify people's code. So you do that. Now, that is a program that is a commit you added with only 75% of knowledge required. So your program might not be addressing the whole thing. And that's why open source is, it's kind of ironic because if you actually produce generally good ideas, you're not going to have too much to commit. When you're facing other people's shit that comes from other people's shit that has their graphs getting fat, then your graph gets fat, but it's all a whole lot of nothing. And this is called technical debt stage seven. There you go. The title says five, but it's actually seven. Yeah. So anywho, that was my presentation to you all. Those are the five stages of grief slash programming. Do whatever you will with those. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Max Syntax. Have a good one.